The Shepherd of Hermas, Part 8 Parables which he spoke with me Parable number 1 He saith to me, Ye know that you, who are the servants of God, are dwelling in a foreign land, for your city is far from this city. If then you know your city in which you shall dwell, why do you here prepare fields and expensive displays and buildings and dwelling chambers which are superfluous? He therefore that prepareth these things for this city doth not purpose to return to his own city. O foolish and double-minded and miserable man! Perceivest thou not that all these things are foreign and are under the power of another? For the Lord of this city shall say, I do not wish thee to dwell in my city. Go forth from this city, for thou dost not conform to my laws. Thou, therefore, who hast fields and dwellings and many other possessions, when thou art cast out by him, what wilt thou do with thy field and thy house and all the other things that thou prepared for thyself? For the Lord of this country said to, saith to thee justly, Either conform to my laws, or depart from my country. What then shalt thou do, who art under law in thine own city? For the sake of thy fields and for the rest of thy possessions, wilt thou altogether repudiate thy law, and walk according to the law of this city? Take heed, lest it be inexpedient to repudiate the law. For if thou shouldst desire to return again to thy city, thou shalt surely not be received, because thou didst repudiate the law of the city, and shall be shut out from it. Take heed, therefore, as dwelling in a strange land, prepare nothing more for thyself but a competency which is sufficient for thee, and make ready that, whenever, whensoever the master of this city may desire to cast thee out, for thy opposition to his law, thou mayest go forth from his city, and depart into thine own city, and use thine own law joyfully, free from all insult. Take heed, therefore, ye that serve God, and have him in your heart, work the works of God, being mindful of his commandments, and of the promises which he made, and believe him that he will perform them, if his commandments be kept. Therefore, instead of fields, buy you souls that are in trouble, as each are able, and visit widows and orphans, and neglect them not, and spend your riches and all your displays which you received from God on fields and houses of this kind. For to this end the Master enriched you, that you might perform these ministrations for him. It is much better to purchase fields and possessions and houses of this kind which thou wilt find in thine own city, when thou visitest it. This lavish expenditure is beautiful and joyous, not bringing sadness or fear, but bringing a joy. The expenditure of the heathen, then, practice not you, for it is not convenient for you, the servants of God. But practice your own expenditure, in which you can rejoice, and do not corrupt neither touch that which is another man's, nor lust after it, for it is wicked to lust after other men's possessions. But perform thine own task, and thou shalt be saved. Parable 2 As I walked in a field, and noticed an elm and a vine, and was distinguishing them and their fruits, the shepherd appeareth to me, and saith, What art thou meditating within thyself? I am thinking, sir, say I, about the elm and the vine, that they are excellently suited one to the other. These two trees, saith he, are appointed for a type to the servants of God. I would fain know, sir, say I, the type contained in these trees, of which thou speakest. Seest thou, saith he, the elm and the vine? I see them, sir, say I. This vine, saith he, beareth fruit, but the elm is an unfruitful stock. Yet this vine, except it climb up the elm, cannot bear much fruit when it is spread on the ground, and such fruit as it beareth is rotten, because it is not suspended upon the elm. When, then, the vine is attached to the elm, it beareth fruit both from itself 
and from the elm. Thou seest then that the elm also beareth much fruit, not less than the vine, but rather more. How more, sir, say I? Because, saith he, the vine, when hanging upon the elm, bears its fruit in abundance, and in good condition. But when spread on the ground, it beareth little fruit, and that rotten. The parable, therefore, is applicable to the servants of God, to, to rich alike. How, sir, say I, instruct me. Listen, saith he, the rich man hath much wealth, but in the things of the Lord he is poor. Being distracted about his riches, and his confession and intercession with the Lord is very scanty, and even that which he giveth is small and weak, and hath not power above. When then the rich man goeth up to the poor, and assisteth him in his needs, believing that for what he does to the poor man he shall be able to obtain a reward with God, because the poor man is rich in intercession and confession, and his intercession hath great power with God, the rich man then supplieth all things to the poor man without wavering. But the poor man, being supplied by the rich, maketh intercession for him, thanking God for him that gave to him. And the other is still more zealous to assist the poor man, that he may be continuous in his life, for he knoweth that the intercession of the poor man is acceptable and rich before God. They both then accomplish their work. The poor man maketh intercession, wherein he is rich, which he received of the Lord. This he rendereth again to the Lord, who supplieth him with it. The rich man, too, in like manner, furnisheth to the poor man, nothing doubting, the riches which he received from the Lord. And this work, great and acceptable with God, because the rich man hath understanding concerning his riches, and worketh for the poor man from the bounties of the Lord, and accomplishes the ministration of the Lord rightly. In the sight of men, then, the elm seemeth not to bear fruit, and they know not, neither perceive, that if there comes a drought, the elm having water, nurtureth the vine, and the vine having a constant supply of water, beareth fruit twofold both for itself and for the elm. So likewise the poor, by interceding with the Lord for the rich, establish their riches, and again the rich, supplying their needs to the poor, establish their souls. So then, both are made partners in the righteous work. He then that doeth these things shall not be abandoned to God, but shall be written in the books of the living. Blessed are the rich who understand also that they are enriched from the Lord. For they that have this mind shall be able to do some good work. Parable 3 He showed me many trees which had no leaves, but they seemed to me to be, as it were, withered, for they were all alike. And he saith to me, Seest thou these trees? I see them, sir, I say, they are all alike, and are withered. He answered and said to me, These trees that thou seest are they that dwell in this world. Wherefore then, sir, say I, are they as if they were withered, and all alike? Because, saith he, neither the righteous are distinguishable, nor the sinners in the world, but they are alike. For this world is winter to the righteous, and they are not distinguishable, as they dwell with sinners. For as in the winter the trees, having shed their leaves, are alike, and are not distinguishable which are withered and which alive, so also in this world neither the just nor the sinners are distinguishable, but they are all alike. Parable 4 He showed me many trees again, some of them sprouting and others withered, and he saith to me, Seest thou, saith he, these trees? I see them, sir, say I, some of them sprouting, and others withered. These trees, saith he, that are sprouting are the righteous, who shall dwell in the world to come. For the world to come is summer to the righteous, but winter to the sinners. When then the mercy of the Lord shall shine forth, they that serve God shall be made manifest, yea, and all men shall be made manifest. 
for as in summer the fruits of each several tree are made manifest and are recognized of what sort they are so also the fruits of the righteous shall be manifest and all even the very smallest shall be known to be flourishing in that world but the gentiles and the sinners just as thou saw the trees which were wizard, withered even such shall they be found withered and unfruitful in that world and shall be burnt up as fuel and shall be manifest because the practice in their lives has been evil for the sinners shall be burned because they sinned and repented not and the gentiles shall be burned because they knew not him that created them do thou therefore bear fruit that in the summer thy fruit may be known but abstain from overmuch business and thou shalt never fill into any fall into any sin for they that busy themselves over much sin much also being distracted about their business and in no wise serving their own lord how then saith he can such a man ask anything of the lord and receive it seeing that he serveth not the lord for they that serve him these shall receive their petitions but they that serve not the lord these shall receive nothing but if any one work one single action he is able also to serve the lord for his mind shall not be corrupted from following the lord but he shall know he shall serve him because he keepeth his mind pure if therefore thou dost these things thou shalt be able to bear fruit unto the world to come yea and whoever shall do these things shall bear fruit end of part 8